the mark of the beast. Because it says you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. You could, you, you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast? Without the mark, yes. Sir. Hello, friends. Welcome to the YouTube channel. You hear it, Pastor James. Listen, I got a good one for you today. We have Tucker Carlson. We're going to watch this amazing interview where they are talking about the mark of the beast. He has John Rich here and uh, John Rich, country music artist, popular, big name. You know, Tucker, who is a journalist, used to work for Fox News, eventually got fired, and now he's doing better than ever. So uh, this is a very interesting discussion because they're going to address the idea of the mark of the beast. Some things they're saying here is very interesting. Not everything is correct, of course. And I do have a thing that I'm going to share with you at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you that I think you guys uh, might benefit from. So let me. There we go. So my PowerPoint is up. I'm going to make sure I share that with you at the end. Uh, and I'm also going to link it in the description so that you can check it out as well. Because what is being discussed here is the mark of the beast. And Tucker is asking the question, how do you understand Revelation? How do you make sense of some of these things? John Rich is going to do his best to explain that. Don't think he's correct. I don't, as a matter of fact, he's not correct. But I, I really appreciate the nature of this discussion. So this is a good time for us to, to talk about this. Anyway, link in the description below if you want to watch the entire interview. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more if you happen to be new. Check out our merch. Go to the store. Support us that way. And by the way, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Contending for the Faith. There should be a link. Uh, in the title of this video, there should be a Pastor James 365. Subscribe to that channel, okay? Many of our contents are going there. Are you ready for this? All right, we're going to go, uh, let's say, 19 minutes in. This is when the discussion gets really interesting. Let's take a listen. So why is it, um, why is Revelation so hard for people to to grasp, to read, to understand? So for thousands of years, um, the prophecies in Revelation and Daniel and other places seemed like such science fiction to people. They just couldn't understand how these things were even possible, including my own dad, who's been preaching since he was about 19. He's in his early 70s now. And he said, yeah, John, you know, just never could understand how some of these things were possible. For instance, the mark of the beast. How is it possible, we would all say, that you could track every human being in the world and know where they are and how they get their money and where they spend their money. I mean, that's just impossible. And here we sit going, oh no, they're tracking us right now. They know exactly where we spend our money and where we get our money. Because it says you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. You could you could replace the word beast with system. Revelation says that. Oh yeah, without the mark. You won't be able to buy or sell. Unless you bear the mark of the beast. And when you when you go back and look that up in the Hebrew, it's talking about the global power that's in place at that point, the system that is in place. What is the what is the beast? The beast is going to be whatever entity, a, a group of nations it speaks of, that will set into motion. We always talk about globalists and the globalist agenda and all these things. It will be a a globalized stranglehold on the human population that they will know where you spend your money, where you get your money, reminds me of uh, central bank digital currency, if something like that happens. So I've read, I'm embarrassed this is being recorded. I probably shouldn't admit this. <laughs> I've read Revelation, actually. Sure. And I tried to understand it um, last year. I didn't realize it said, how did I miss that? It says you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Without the mark, yes, that's John correct. on the Apostle John on some Greek island 2,000 years ago said that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And so, so prior to technology showing up where it's at now in 2024, these things were impossible. Couldn't he? I mean, this, how's that going to happen? That's a pretty specific call, though. To Very specific. Yeah. So now all the things that need to exist physically are all here now so that the prophecies that have been laid out could now physically manifest. Now, I don't know if that's going to be today or a hundred years from now, or a thousand years from now. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know this is a new era. So when you read Revelation, and you read Daniel, and you read these other these other prophecies, it now doesn't sound like science fiction anymore because we see it every single day. That is absolutely crazy. Is that a light bulb going off or what? Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't, and I also don't quite know how I read the whole thing and didn't catch that. 
Well, it's a because that is just, that is one of the central questions. I mean, that's like top three question of our current moment is: Will we allow technology to take our autonomy away and, for example, control what we buy or sell? I mean, right. right? Well, I mean, yeah, with the advent, what we've got AI now in the mix. Yeah. Uh, we've got all these things that I mean, we already know they they track us. We already know they know where we spend our money. We already know all those things. And again, this was a very interesting discussion. Uh, John Rich is. He's got a couple of things right. Uh, number one, he's talking about the mark of the beast is, is centered around a system, right? A system. However, if he did f fail to understand what that system is. He didn't identify the system. We, we, we've done that in this channel. By the way, if you happen to be new, we do identify the mark of the beast. We expose the system for what it is. Okay. So I, I will highly recommend, if you haven't already seen, I will recommend a video. Um, I'm going to put a link in the PowerPoint. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to put the Mark of the Beast series so you can check it out where we have spoken about this. Um, uh, he's also correct about the idea that the, the buying and selling is is connected to the Mark of the Beast. However, it's, the Mark of the Beast in itself is something spiritual, but the buying and selling is some form of economic boycott that will enforce people to go along with that new system of uh, economy, new world order, you can call it, right? But it's going to be a system, and that system does seem to appear uh, in the light of what, you know, all the technology that we now have, uh, I get, I guess CDBC and many other means, it does look like the system is already here, right? Um, but what, what the market of beast is, is, is not exactly that, right? The system is here, but as far as what the market of beast is, uh, um, it has yes to be enforced. And I'm going to explain that. Now, I'm not going to be telling you this in today's video. For those of you who's watched me before, I've already addressed this. Uh, if you happen to be new once again, check out our series on the Mark of the Beast. There should be a link at the top and you can check it out. But here is what we're going to be talking about today. First of all, Tucker Carlson asked the question, how do you understand Revelation? And the truth is, that is the challenge for a lot of people. They don't know how to understand it. So this is what we have this little PowerPoint here. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, and I'm going to get into the details, okay? So unlocking Revelation, I'm going to share it with you. Why do so many Christians fail to understand the book of Revelation, right? There are some several reasons. John Rich talks about kind of the technology change in a sense, but really, that's not really the reason why. This is the reason why. The perception that the book of Revelation is mysterious. The first issue that we have, a lot of people who study the book of Revelation, they say that this stuff is mysterious. We cannot understand it. So that's already a problem. So there's a misconception here. So the prophecies contain revelation or for the future. They, there's a, there's, there's, there is this knowledge, this perception, everything in the revelation is futuristic. But that's not the case. A lot of it is historical. And some of it is current. And some of it is also for the future. So uh, this is known as the historical flow method. Anyway, the prophetic interpretation, futurism, is misleading. A lot of people do not understand Revelation because of this. It's something called futurism. Look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up. It's a mode of interpretation which is confusing the masses. There's also something called preterism. It's not as popular as futurism is. But futurism is this concept that the book of Revelation is thrown into the future we have a end time antichrist. We have a third temple we build. We have a secret rapture. We have the pre-trib, mid-trib, and so on. There is all these different concepts that came along with it. But futurism is misleading. Actually, it's a Jesuit thing. There was a movement um, to undo the Protestant Reformation. It was part of the Counter-Reformation. Um, and the goal was to confuse Christians and Protestants from seeing the antichrist for who it was, and guess what? It worked. So this is the reason why most Christians don't understand it, is because they are using the wrong tool to understand uh, Revelation. They're using futurism. You got to use the historical flow method or historicism, it is referred to. This is when you look at the Bible from a historical standpoint, current, and also to the future. You have to flow with the, the nature of the prophecies from the time of the prophet to the end times. And when you should do study that correctly, 
it, it will just shine. So I just wanted to give that, those reasons out there. So let me read this quickly. Uh, Blessed is he that readeth and hear that hear the words of the prophecy of this book and give those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Look at this. There is a blessing if you read. There is a blessing if you hear. There's also a blessing if you keep it. Next, we all totally know Hosea. When you're understanding proper, to understand Bible prophecy, we are told that God has multiplied visions and given symbols. A lot of time when God is speaking to the prophets, he gives us symbols. I'm going fairly quickly through this because I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. But please, this sermon note is going to be in the description. Check it out. So next, this is why when you go to the book of Revelation, you'll find a lot of symbols, right? You see 666 and women in, you know, in white being chased by a dragon. And you see a number of things, right? We have the lamb, we have the dragon, we have like the six seals, the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the pale horse. And we have the beast with horns, and we have a lady in white, a lady in red. Listen, these are signs and symbols. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, and I want to highlight this, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and he did what? Signify. The first letter we have here is what? Sign. So God has given us signs in the revelation to interpret what is written. The symbols must be unlocked. So this is why in this PowerPoint, you're also going to get this. Go over to the prophecy code. This is done by Doug Bachelor. You have this right here to work with. Uh, this, isn't, um, this is a link directly to the website. In the PowerPoint, you can have that as well. There's a PDF format. Let me show you what it looks like. In that PDF format, you get to see the codes, the prophetic interpretation codes. Here is the thing. This is, in, this is important for you to understand that. Once you get used to this, you can do this yourself. But, for example, you need to understand what these symbols are. Like white, what does that represent? Blue, purple. So this is when you're using the Bible to interpret itself, and I'm going to speak a little bit more about that. So this is actually well done by Doug Bachelor, and I've used it for years. I've used it, and I became really good at understanding these times. Um, but once you begin to apply this, the Bible will unlock. So you need to understand the codes uh, throughout the Bible so that you can unlock the book of Revelation. You need to understand what these symbols represent throughout the scripture. And this is what that little uh, PDF is going to do for you. So make sure you go and download that. And there's also a number one as well that talks about the different numbers in the Bible and how to actually uh, decode them. All right, next now. The book, so I'm going to give you some principles of how to unlock the book, okay? So let's go with principle number one. We're going to go through this very quickly. The book of Revelation is built upon the solid foundation of the Old Testament. When you read the Revelation, you got to have a knowledge, number one, of the Old Testament. Why? Because 404 verses in Revelation, it, 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 it has 404 verses, but 274 verses are taken from the Old Testament. This is why you need a knowledge of the Old Testament. For example, you might find a woman by the name of Jezebel in Revelation, right? So what do you need? Well, you need a knowledge of the Old Testament so that you can understand Jezebel. We all talked about Jezebel in Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Okay, but this is a futuristic Jezebel. This is a spiritual version of Jezebel. When you study the literal Jezebel, then you can make sense of this. So having a knowledge of Jezebel in the Old Testament will help you to unlock the spiritual Jezebel in Revelation. So we also have Babylon, for example, right? It is mentioned that Babylon mystery, the mother of Harlot, the mobination of the earth, right? This woman who actually it plays a significant role in enforcing the mark of the beast. This woman is also mentioned... This Babylonian system is where you get the word Babel from, from Genesis, but also the same Babylonian is mentioned in the book of Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar, the system of Babylon, you need to understand those stories because those stories are going to help you to understand what is going on here. So type anti-type, right? Literal and spiritual. So when you do that, that's going to help you a lot. So you need a knowledge of the Old Testament. So the old story, Babylon, and for example, you have beasts in, in Revelation. In Revelation, chap in Daniel chapter 7, those same beasts are mentioned. We are told these beasts have in heads, it has the body of a leopard, feet of a bear, mouth of a lion. But when you go to Daniel chapter 7, these are the same beasts Daniel is talking about. So a knowledge of the Old Testament is crucial. So it's even said that the book of Daniel and Revelations are the sisters' books. You cannot do without a knowledge of Daniel. You need both a knowledge of Daniel 
in the rest of the Old Testament so that you can better unlock Revelation. Um, you see all these different symbols and so on. It is all mentioned before. So the best way I can explain is this. The book of Revelation is a mosaic of Scripture, okay? A mosaic of Scripture is that there are many different pictures in it, but ultimately it makes one big picture. So that's kind of what's happening, that all these different Scriptures and different stories, when you combine them, you end up with one major picture, which is the revelation of Jesus. So um, so that's kind of how you have to approach revelation, like a puzzle in a sense. So now let's go on. Number two is that the Bible is its own interpreter and, expo and, and expo inter I mean, expositor and interpreter. Okay, let the Bible speak. And that's what I like to tell people. Um, we are told that the prophecies came not by the will of men, but holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this is what we are told. No scripture is of my own interpretation. So your own interpretation doesn't matter when it comes to Bible prophecy. You have to let the Bible interpret itself. We are told that there were holy men. There were many of them who wrote, right? So these holy men must speak. We are told in Isaiah, what we have to do is to apply precept upon precept, line upon line, hear a little and bear a little. Let me explain to you what this means. This is also, also another biblical principle. So when you look at what that means, this is what you end up with. For example, precept upon precept represents, um, so you got this idea of precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. This is known as contextual study. When you do uh, 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 theology, you will understand what I mean. So you need to look at the context when you study in the Bible, especially the book of Revelation. Uh, there's also uh, the line upon line, here a little, there a little. This is known as comparative study. So you have to do contextual and comparative study to better understand the book of Revelation. So uh, you can go as far to say this is known as the proof text study. Why? Because the Bible says, which things we also speak, not in words with men wisdom teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So you have to compare the Bible with itself. Uh, we must pray. Number three, we must pray for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and understanding. This stuff is spiritual. So we are told that uh, Jesus says, I will instruct thee and teach thee the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide you with mine eyes. So you need the Holy Spirit to assist you to understand the book of Revelation. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If you want me to go through this without going so fast, I will just let, just let put a link. Put a comment below. I will go in great details. I'm going pretty fast because I just want to get this video out and get to the points. But if you want me to slow down and actually carefully explain this, I will do that. But again, I just wanted to share the PowerPoint with you. The principle is already in your hand, so you can work with that. So um, anyway, let's move on to the next one. We have pray for a humble and teachable spirit. Not only So you need to pray. Jesus say, if you, bless, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. So next principle is that you need to approach the book of Revelation with a desire to obey what God says. You must be willing to obey. We are told those who keep the words are the ones that are blessed. But the word keep here is the same word for obey. The ISV puts the word obey. So God is not giving you the prophecies just to incite you, just to make you curious, but the goal is for you to obey. Next, we are told, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, that they may enter into the gates into the city. So obedience is crucial. Let's go to the last one. We want to wrap it up. Study the book of Revelation with a keen eye focus on Jesus. This is crucial. Christ is the center of the book. We are told Revelation has 28 times mentioned the word lamb, but 27 times it refers to Jesus. The one time it doesn't is in Revelation chapter 13. It speaks about the lamb-like beast, which is actually the United States of America when you carefully study that. Um, anyway, we are told in John chapter 5 verse 30, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life for they are they that testify of me. So Jesus again said, you go throughout the entire Bible, in all the prophets, these things were written concerning me. Again, Christ is the center of the book. And if you make Christ your focus, you will have fun. Anyway, I know I went pretty fast on that. Like I've said, this note in this link, it's in a link. It's in the description. You can just take it, do with it as you please. 
uh, I'm giving it away. Uh, actually, I did it for you guys. Um, you can work with it however you choose to. But the point of the matter is, when you look at what the Bible actually says, um, these men are not far from the truth, but they're just not connecting the dots correctly. They haven't done a good job identifying the beast. And this is kind of why the confusion actually happened and they have to change their mode of interpretation has to be different. We are told you had power to give life to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand and in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell save he that have the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Friends, that is where we are headed prophetically. And I can tell you for certain, we're not far from seeing these words being fulfilled. Let's get ready. Let's stay ready. And let's pray for men like Tucker Carlson, John Rich, and many others who are hungry and seeking for truth, that the Lord will lead them to the light, lead them to our videos, lead them to places where they can actually understand these matters. Anyway, much more could be said. Share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Make sure you check out our series on the Mark of the Beast. Don't forget to subscribe to Contending for the Faith. And make sure you go to the store, check out our merch. Check out our merch and find something to put on is one of the best ways to support us in this channel. God bless you guys. I love you. Stay strong and continue to share and preach the word and keep your keep yours truly in prayer. There's a lot going on in my world, but guess what, man? We're going to keep on working over here, but I need you to keep on praying for myself and my family that we get rid of the destruction. The enemy has a way of trying to confuse and keep us from working, but I'll tell you what, uh, just keep us in your prayer because God is, good, is stronger than man. All right, friends. God bless you. Have a good one. Bye.